County to catch the Hill people, I wasn't so sure. We'd been trying to hire some for a week with no results. Howdy. Good afternoon. My name's Sproul. Eli Chandler. Nice to meet you. You all looking for work? Yep. Where are you from? Eureka Springs. Yeah, I'm looking for field hands. How much you paying? 160 a hundred. The only ones that give us 160. I think we should take it. You think? Uh, what kind of cotton? Stoneville. Bowls are ready, be easy to pick. Well, we made 160 last year. It was the same. Well, we was kind of hoping to make a little more. What's your name? Luke. And all. I'm sorry, can't It's yours. Go. Tally. How old are you? Ten. Yep. How old are you? Seventeen. How long you been riding that trailer? Day and a half. This is Trot. He ain't right. Nice to meet you, Trot. Penmanship's getting better, Luke. Where's your grandfather? Across the street checking on the Mexicans. Y'all using hill people too? Yep. Just found some. <laughs> Buenos dias, senor. Buenos dias. Last year, Juan talked to some Mexican. He lies worried about paying them too much. Your grandfather worries about everything. <sighs> He's a farmer. Are you going to be a farmer? No, ma'am. Baseball player. For the Cardinals? Of course. Hey, in my trouble. Orale, pa' arriba. Pa' arriba. Arriba. Buenos dias, senor. I thought you told them to set up behind the barn. I did. They set up right on my baseball field. I finally got the Mexicans. Seven of them. Yes, ma'am. That's good. What are those people doing in our front yard? I asked them to sit up behind the barn. I don't know why they picked that spot. Can you ask them to move? I cannot. They pack up, they'll leave. You know how hill people are. Say good evening, muchachos. Wait. Oh. Going out to the fields until your dad's supper's almost ready.
It's very nice, very clean. It nice. is, isn't it? Oh. Um. <laughs> the garden's full, and I'll bring you a basket every other day. Y'all don't have to pay for it. It's just part of the deal. Gracias, senora. As I rode back from the fields, holding on to my father, his shirt and overalls were soaked with sweat, but his arms were like steel. My mother was waiting for us by the water pump. She had grown up in a house full of girls and had been raised in part by a couple of old prissy aunts. I think they had bathed more than farm people, and her passion for cleanliness had rubbed off on my father. I got a complete scrubbing every Saturday afternoon, whether I needed it or not. Colonel's game rained out. Rain. Nothing to worry about. It's all the way up in St. Louis. expect what to break even this year that's the goal breaking even is not a bad thing we don't want for anything what about the debt you and your daddy are carrying from previous years we owe 2000 with the gin for 51 we owe the john deere dealer in jonesboro for parts co-op for seed and supplies and watson's for groceries i know the situation Someday it'll be different. I'll own my own land, free and clear. And how different will it be, Jesse? myself a Colonel's jacket. Oh, yeah? Uh, Con Colonel Red. It's shiny guy. Costs $7.50. In 10 days, I'll pick enough to get it. That's real nice. Lou! Yeah? What are you doing? Uh, I had to take a pee. Keep up now. Yes, sir. No Piedras. 52. Right, lunch. Sounds 
Ah, uh, the heat got him. Luke, we'd like you to stay with Trod up here at the house for the rest of the afternoon. And if he takes a turn for the worse, y'all just come out to the lower 40 and fetch one of the sprules. Well, what about my caramel jacket? There's 80 acres of cotton out there. I guess we could save you a little bit. Are you okay? I guess. Does Telly like baseball? Picked 300 pounds, then the heat got me. Fetch me some water, boy. Sir? Fetch me some water. Cold water, boy, from the house. And hurry, I've been working all day, you ain't. Got anything to eat? Do you? Um, no. You mean no, sir? Don't you, boy? No, sir. You farm people are right uppity, you know that? Think you're better than us hill folk because you have this land because you pay us to work it. We're just one notch above them wetbacks, ain't we, boy? Just a bunch of hillbillies. Ain't that right, boy? We got a house nicer than yours, boy. A lot nicer. It's bigger. Got a long front porch. And you know what else it's got? <laughs> you ain't gonna believe this, but our house has got paint on it. White paint. You ever see paint, boy? <laughs> 
Why don't you sawbusters paint your houses? Stop it, I! told me about what Hank said, what he did. You tell your daddy? Didn't tell no one. You scared? No. My pappy would take a stick to Hank. He's got a mean streak my granddaddy has. Why then? Because, because if Pappy punishes Hank, you folks will pack up and move down the road to another farm. We'll be left short-handed. That's why. You're smarter than I thought. Well, if it means anything, I'm sorry about what Hank done and said. Mama, mm -hmm. ever think of painting the house? Foolishness. It costs too much. Luke, someday we'll have a house with indoor plumbing and shrubs around the porch and with paint on the boards, maybe even brick. Twelve o'clock. Quitting time. On Saturdays, we pick a half day. Just a half day today. On Sunday, we can go to the movies. I understand. I don't need a movie. I need all the work I can get. On Saturdays, we work half day. Sundays, we don't work at all. We observe the Sabbath. Saturdays we work half day. Town on Saturday afternoon was very busy. All the farmers and all their families were loading up on supplies, talking weather and trading gossip. Hey, Buenos Dias. There's an advance against your picking earnings. You gotta pay that back. Yes, ma'am. Bye. Bye, Mom. There's a fight behind the co-op. Told 
Don't you? Mm. Ooh, that. Don't know. Probably no Billy. Come on, Jerry! Come on! Let's go! Let's go! Come on! That ain't fair. Fight like a man. See this. I awoke to the sound of rain and the tin roof sang under the torrents. My thoughts were on the fight. I wanted to tell my father, but then I did not want to be a witness. Luke! Pappy says the rain's gonna stop in time for church. What you want for breakfast? Biscuits. Then I'll make some biscuits. I had a dream last night about Ricky. A good dream? Yes, very good. I dreamed the war suddenly ended. They forgot to tell us. We were all sitting out here on the porch one night, and out there on that road, we saw a man running toward us. And it was Ricky. I wish I can have a dream like that. Well, I think the Lord is telling us something. Uncle Ricky coming home? Yes. Maybe not right away, but the war will be ended soon. And we'll look up and we'll see him walking across the yard there. Bryn? Uh huh. I pray for Uncle Ricky every night. Oh, Stick, you're working on Sunday. Crime don't seem to respect the Sabbath. One of them Cisco boys is dead. Murder? Good folks get murdered. White trash like the Cisco's get killed. I still got to investigate. We're going to need to come out and speak to one of your hands. I have to wait till after church. Some folks go to church. I'm on duty. Big fight yesterday in town. A couple of local boys got into it with a fella from the hills. One of them died this morning. Fractured skull. Ain't none of us. We're peaceful folk. Is that so? Y'all going to town yesterday? We did. We did. You got a boy named Hank? Maybe. Don't play games with me. I ask you a question, you give me a straight answer. You got a big jail over in Jonesboro with a lot of room. I'm Hank Sproul. Did you go into town yesterday and get in a fight behind the co-op? Nope. I stopped the fight. A couple fellas was beating up on a boy from the hills. I stopped it. You use a piece of wood? Didn't need to. I asked you a question. Did you use a piece of wood? Nope. They had a two by four. 
Well, I guess I better take you in. Oh. If he goes, we go. Ah, uh, slow down, Stick. You and I both know Cisco's ain't good for nothing. They fight off when they fight dirty. Seems to me they just picked on the wrong fella. I got a body, Eli. You understand? He was just breaking up a fight. I heard after the fight was over, he picked up a piece of wood and beat the boys. Now, I know two against one ain't fair. And I know it's the Cisco's. But I ain't sure one of them had to get killed. I didn't kill nobody. I broke up a fight, and there was three of them, not two. In a court in this country, convict three against one. That's if he's telling the truth. He's going to need witnesses. Little Chandler saw it. Come here, Luke. You see the fight? Yes, sir. What were you doing there? I heard there was a fight. So I took off and watched it. Tell me what you saw and tell the truth. That boy don't lie. Jerry Sisko was fighting some men from the hills when Mr. Hank stepped in and helped the man from the hills. The first hill man, he left. I think he was hurt pretty bad. Then all of a sudden, Bobby Sisko charged from the crowd and attacked Mr. Hank. It's three against one. Just like Mr. Hanks said. That settles it. Who used the two by four? Tell him, boy. One of them Cisco boys picked up that stick of wood, didn't he? Didn't he, boy? You watch yourself, boy. Stick. You're scaring my boy to death. Must be a lot of people that saw this fight. Say we. Go bedevil them. I'm going to keep asking around. And I might be back. Luke, why don't you tell us about that fight? I was scared, I guess. Scared? Scared of what? Scared of getting caught on the co-op watching the fight. Uh, Luke, I'm not too worried about you watching the fight. But keeping secrets can get you into trouble. You should have told us what you saw. I saw a fight. I never knew Jerry Sisko was going to die. And you told Stick Powers the truth? Yes, sir. One of them Cisco boys picked up that stick of wood? Or was it Hank Spruill? Well, to be honest, Dad, things happen so fast. There's bodies falling and flying everywhere. Hank was throwing those boys around like they were little toys. The crowd was moving and hollering. Then I saw the stick of wood. Luke, honey. Little boys who keep secrets from their parents can get in big trouble. You can tell us anything. Yes, ma'am. Supper in an hour, OK? OK. Dear Mom and Dad and Jesse and Kathleen and Luke, I hope all is well at home. I never thought I'd miss cotton picking. But I sure wish I was home right now. I miss everything. <sighs> the farm, the fried chicken, the cardinals. Anyway, I'm doing fine over here. Things are quiet. We're not on the front anymore. My unit is five miles back, and nobody is shooting at us. And we're not shooting at anybody. I really think I'll be home soon. I got your last batch of letters, and they mean a lot to me. So keep writing. Gotta run. Love to all. Ricky. We won't.
won't be going to town Saturday. Why not? Because I say so. You ain't afraid of the Cisco's, are you? Be best if the Spruels stay out of town for a while. I discussed it with Mr. Spruel and we decided it'd be best to stay put on Saturday. Even the Mexicans. Hey, I ain't afraid of nobody, son. Don't you sass me. Why I gotta do this if we're not going to town? I'll do it. <clears throat> I'm going to Pop and Pearls for a few things. You wanna go, Lou? No, sir. Buy a cola. No, thanks. Hey, no need to be just as stubborn as he is. After five days of endless labor and heat, and without the prospect of going to town, we all got together and played baseball. The cowboy pitched for the Mexicans and was surprisingly good. He struck me out easily. I was humiliated, especially in front of Tally. Give it a whack, Tally. He ain't no pitcher. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> Go, Tally, give it a ride. Right there. Ah. Hey, oh, oh, there you go, oh, Mr. Ah, ah. That's the game. When Tally got a hit, my humiliation, enormous, grew even greater. Ow! Oh. Strike two. Come on, Hank. Hank wasn't having any better luck than me against Cowboy. And when he struck out, I was glad my father was around. Don't throw the bat. If you can't be a sport, then don't play. It was now Hank's turn to pitch to Cowboy. He reached back for all the juice he could find and hurled a fastball directly at him. Nobody's fighting here. Miguel, get him back to the barn. Come on, Hank. Déjalo. Kill that boy. You've killed enough. All right. Come on, Hank. Let's go. Come on. Go we'll kill him. You uh, Stay away over. from the barn, Hank. Will you do me a favor, Luke? Your grandma told my mom there's a creek close by we can bathe in. Do you know where it is? Sutter's Creek, about a half mile that way. Are there any snakes? Maybe a little water snake or two. No cotton mouth. Well, will you go with me? Why? I don't know. Make sure nobody sees me. Are you scared? Maybe. A little. I'm real sorry about Hank. He's always causing trouble. Did you see the fight? The one in town? No. Was it awful? Yeah, pretty bad. He beat those boys so bad. Beat him long after the fight was over. 
Will you tell me the truth, Luke? Did he pick up that stick first? Happened real fast. Has he ever killed anyone before? Not that I know of. He went up north once, and he got into some trouble up there. But we never knew what happened. That's the best spot. How deep is it? About here. Will you go on back up by the trail and make sure nobody's looking, okay? Okay. Go on. Okay. And Luke, no peeking, okay? Of course not. Thanks, Luke. I feel so much better. You saw me, didn't you, Luke? Yes. That's okay. I'm not mad. You're not? No. I guess it's only natural, you know? For boys to look at girls. Ages. How you doing? Hey, folks. This here is my bride, Stacy. She's from Michigan. Uh, this here is my uncle Eli and uh, his son, my cousin Jess. And that there is Gran and Kathleen, Jess's wife, and Kathleen's boy, Luke. I brought Stacy down to meet all the relatives. I'm so pleased to meet you. Some car, Jimmy. Yep, yeah, it's brand new. Got it last week. Me and Stacy got married a month ago, and uh, it's our wedding present. Stacy and I got married, not me and Stacy. What is it? 52? No, no, it's 53. Newest thing on the road. Built it myself. You don't say. Yeah, Buick lets us custom order our own cars, and then they, uh, we get to watch them when they come down the line. I put the dashboard in this one. How much did it cost? Luke! <laughs> $2,700. It's no secret. Every dealer in the country knows how much they cost. Hill people? Yeah, Eureka Springs. Why do they live like that? Where else could they live? Can't you provide housing for them? Anyway, um, <clears throat> Buell could let us finance the cars for 24 months. You're so sweet tea. Tea with ice. Yeah. None for me. Thank you. Do you have any hot tea? We don't drink hot tea around here. Well, up in Michigan, we don't drink it with ice. This ain't Michigan. Would you like to see my garden, Stacy? Yeah, that's a great idea. Go on, sweetheart. Uh, Kathleen's got just about the prettiest garden in Arkansas. 
I'll go with you. Where in Pete's sake did you find her, Jimmy Dale? She's a sweet girl, Eli. Yeah. She is a Yankee. Yankees ain't so bad. Well, they're smart enough to avoid cotton. They, they make good money and they build good schools. Stacy's family lives in a real nice house with an indoor plumbing, a telephone, and television. How's Luther? He's doing real well. I got him on at the plant. He's making $3 an hour, 40 hours a week. <laughs> Luther ain't never seen so much money. He was picking cotton for other people around here. Making, what, a thousand bucks a year? Now he makes six thousand a year, plus a bonus and retirement. Six thousand dollars? Yes, sir. Luke, go check on your mama. Go on. Where's the clutch? Ain't got no clutch. It's an automatic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I inherited it. We seem to have a lot of green thumbs in my family. We get almost everything we eat out of here. It's amazing how much can provide for the wintertime, too. It's, it's really incredible, actually. Oh, look what you found. I think I really... <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's just a green one. Don't they have snakes up in Michigan? Oh dear. I'll make some hot tea. I'll help you. Luke. You watch after Stacy. I've never ridden in a car. We have a truck. How old are you? Ten years old. You're ten and you've never ridden in a car. You ever seen a television? In the catalog. Ever use a telephone? No, ma'am. Unbelievable. Do you go to school? Yes, ma'am. Well, thank heavens. I just can't believe how backward you people are. Here we are. Jimmy Dale! If we don't get going, we're gonna be late. Oh, that's right. Um, she has to go to the bathroom. Oh, come with me. She don't have indoor plumbing? Oh, well, this is oh. it. Oh. I'll give you some privacy. <laughs> Miss Stacy, it's me, Luke. I'm occupied. Well, um, don't come out right now. There's a big black snake out here. Oh, ma! Oh, ma! Oh! Shh, ma. Shh, be quiet. Otherwise, I'll know that you're in there. Do something. I can't. He's big and he bites. Get Jimmy Dale! Okay, but don't come out. He's right by the door. <laughs>
You do some practice, Luke? Yes, sir. You be careful you don't bother the Mexicans. <laughs> and keep an eye out for them big, biting black snakes. <laughs> that was a good one, Luke. Served her right. <laughs> <laughs> you little dickens. Come with me to the latches. The Latchers were a family of sharecroppers who lived no more than a mile from our house. Their rundown shack contained a horde of little Latchers. They had no electricity. Mom's delivery was hey, one part kindness Price, and one part gossip. Hello, Mrs. Chandler. Uh, I'm glad you're here. It's, it's Libby. She's about to have the baby. A baby? Yes, she's in labor. Well, we better get the doctor. Oh, no, we can't do that. No one can know about this, no one. We, we've got to keep it quiet. We're so ashamed. She won't tell us who the father is, and right now I don't care. If the doctor comes, the whole county will know. we got to keep this quiet, Mrs. Chandler. Please, can you promise me? I'll get Grand. She's done this many times. Please, do. And hurry. I'll be back in half an hour. Mom and Gran were up to something, but I didn't know what. I saw Tally over at the water pump and decided we could figure it out together. Luke, what are you doing? Promise you won't tell? Promise. And storm clouds gathering in the northern part of the state moving in a south-southeasterly direction, so we can see... He's the only one who has the time, and he's here by the house all day with nothing to do. I wonder why he'd do such a thing. Where'd he get the paint? It's a mystery.
Tornadoes were common in our part of Arkansas, and I'd heard many stories about them. We watched the funnel in muted fascination, and as suddenly as it appeared, it was gone. After three days of peace and hard work, I was awakened in the middle of the night. I crept toward my window and peered through the darkness. And there was Hank, still angry and determined to torment Cowboy and the other Mexicans. Something I need to tell you. What is it? I think Tally and Cowboy like each other. Oh, really? Now, how do you know this? I caught them in the cotton patch. What were they doing? I don't know. But they were together. Do you think they were kissing? Probably. Oh, well. I'll talk to your father about it. Mrs. Chandler. Hi, Luke. Hey. Hi. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome, Mrs. Chandler. How's the baby? Oh, he's fine. Good. I, I guess you want to see him. Yes, I would. <laughs> oh, here. Luke. Piercy? We're gonna whoop your behind, Luke. Why? Because you're a Chandler, and your Ricky did that to Libby. It was my boy like that. He ain't done nothing. I want you to watch this. No, Darla, we're leaving. What was that all about? Well, what Rick did to Libby. We don't know that for sure. what happened. Three of them jumped loose, the little criminals. We're taking food over, and they pull a stunt like this. Three. Didn't run away, did you? No, he did not. He was kicking and clawing just as much as they were. You land a good punch? They were all crime when I left. Right. Say there were three of them, huh? 
Well, good for you, boy. It'll make it tough. No, I think it's broken. You okay, Luke? Yep. Come on, let's get you out of those muddy clothes. Oh, no. Come on, champ. Come on over here, boy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Where are you going? I don't know. Just walking. Going to the creek. <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> not this time. I'm I'm not bathing. It's just to sit on. Jesse, how much did Hank pick today? Under 200. Say 190. He was picking 400 a week ago. I've got a good mind to drive into town tomorrow, find Stick Powers, tell him I'm done with the boy. Mexicans are saying somebody's still throwing rocks at the barn at night. Well, it seems to me the thing to do is tell Mr. Spruill that Stick is coming after Hank. Let the boy sneak away at night. He'll be gone. That's all that matters. Mr. Spruill will be thankful you kept him from getting arrested. Pappy, we don't pass the call. Mr. Watson wants to see you. Hey, Luke. Come here. I'm going to show you something, boy. Look, look. He's right there. Come on. World Series. I don't have to tell you. Game three. Dodgers at Yankee Stadium. Big game this is for these cross town rivals. Who are you pulling for? I don't know. Dodgers, I guess. You always got to pull for the National League. And the pitch. Wow, he got under all of that one, and it's a high arch right through the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Back, back, back. Yes, yeah, That's right. Had some heavy rains up in North County last night. Six inches. Ago. You know, tell them when they're gonna be able to get wagons in them fields. My cousin in Oklahoma got flooded out. Yeah, we ain't had a flood in October in 20 years. Hey, Luke. Hey, Tally. I just saw the World Series on the television. I'm going to have a television of my own someday. What's the paint for? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Let's go, Luke. Dick told me he's coming out here to take Hank. I'll talk to him. I probably better be heads out. I well, like I say, I'll talk to him. How do you take it? Well, they need the money. They say that old sheriff Stick's coming to get you. I ain't afraid of that dumb sheriff. But you don't want to get arrested. I didn't do nothing. The Chandlers want you to leave. Oh, I got more money in my pocket than them sod busters will ever have. It, it just go on back home now, son. Let, let things cool down. Come on, I'll be the best. All right, I'll leave.
What's going on here? None of your business, Hank. Going home? You heard him. Get on out of here or I'll tell Ma and Pa what you're doing. Go home. Come on up here, brown skin. I'm fixing to teach you something. Now I'm gonna settle your hash once and for all. You like my sister, Mexicano? Every little wet back, ain't you? Okay, Luke? Didn't need enough to feed a bird. Just tired. If it's not, you go to bed early, okay? <sighs> Any reason the truck would be gone? Say what? The truck's gone. I left it right here. Where was the tape? By the radio, same as always. We lost town there. I can't find her no place. Can she drive a truck? No, she what? can. Don't suppose Hank took it. Hank would not steal your truck. Hank's halfway home by now. We better go check the barn for Cowboy. Morning, Miguel. Senor. Is there a problem? Yes, senor, a little problem. What is it? Cowboy is gone. Must be contagious. You think he took her? I don't know what to think. He took my baby? We need to get a law on this. I'm gonna go on hook the truck from the tent. Jesse will go with you. Go on, sir. No, Luke, honey. It's not your place.
When the weather didn't let up, Pappy got concerned that the rain would swell the river, it would be flooded out. But there was a secret part of me that prayed the river would rise and wash everything away. Check it later. Found it in the bus station over in Jonesboro. Where's the key? Under the seat. And it had a full tank of gas. I don't know if it had a full one when it left here, but it's full now. It's half empty. It must have just borrowed. That's the way I see it. You still want to press charges? Uh, I guess not. Did anybody see him? They bought two tickets to Chicago. When the bus got loaded, they both got on and sat together. What time did the bus leave? Six this morning. Found this on the front seat. It's a note from Tally to y'all. I ain't read it. Ain't none of my business, ma'am, but uh, if there's any useful information, I'd need to know. She says she ain't coming home. She says she and Cowboy are getting married. Gonna live up north, where they can find good jobs and such. They gonna stay in Chicago? Don't say. Just as up north. Well, Mike, stay bringing the truck back. Much obliged. Oh, ain't nothing. Say, Eli. Where's that big one, Hank? He took off for home. Well, I'm going to call the sheriff up in Eureka Springs. I ain't through with him, you know. When I find him, I'm going to put him in the jail in Jonesboro, and we're going to have us that trial. Yeah, you do that, Stick. Although there were occasional clear days, the news was somber and threatening. Heavy rains had hit Clay County, north of us. The creeks and streams were flooded up there and pouring into the river. The water was rising. Well, the ground's too soft, cotton's too wet. I guess they've had enough. Over here. It's for you. Tally bowed. Thanks.
I doing? Oh, it's beautiful, Luke. Just go slow and take your time. And don't fall. I'm not gonna fall. Starts driving the prices up. Yeah, a few more dry days, we're clear. Alona! Stop in an house alone, cannot be moved. Move us, Matos! Luke, 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 Luke! Aquí, 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 Rains had forced us all to kill long hours in and around the house. Even on days when the sun tried to break through the clouds, the cotton was too wet and the ground was too soft. The Mexicans were delighted to have something to do, and we all attacked the unpainted house with a vengeance. a secret. Would you promise not to tell anybody else? Let's try it out. Hank is dead. Cowboy killed him. With a knife of his, I saw it all. Hank saw Cowboy and Tally together. <sighs> Tally see this too? No, sir. Cowboy sent her away. They fought at the bridge. Hank landed in the middle of the river, and he never came back up. You should have told me then. I just couldn't. Cowboy see you? What are we gonna do, Pappy? Killed their son and stole their daughter. My, oh, my. Are we going to tell anybody? Nope, I don't think so. Nothing we can say is going to bring that boy back and tell him folks who just make a fuss none of us need. Well, what about Mr. and Mrs. Sproul? It only hurt them if they knew. We ain't telling nobody. Just be our secret. When we take to our graves, just you and me. But you done right telling me. Don't you worry none. I'll handle this. Hey, don't worry. I'll handle it. 
Ship's over the banks. <sighs> it's flooding. Cans of paint coming right up. That's not enough. That'll do for now. That'll be uh, ten dollars plus tax of uh, thirty-six cents. Well, looks like I just brought ten with me. I'll bring in the tax next time. Oh sure, Jesse. I'm gonna go talk to Riggs. You help Mr. Watson put this paint in the truck. Be back in a few minutes. How much is two gallons? Two fifty a gallon. Total of five dollars. Here's five. You pick cotton for that money? Yes, sir. Well, does your daddy know you're buying paint? Not yet. What are you all painting out there? Our house. Well, why are you doing that? Because it ain't never been painted before. <laughs> Plus 18 cents for tax. You got that? How much does my daddy owe you for tax? 36 cents. Take from this. All right. Good job, Luke. How much paint is left? None. It's all gone. How much you need to paint the front? I reckon four or five gallons. I don't want you to spend your own money on paint. It's my money. Y'all said I could spend it on whatever I wanted. What about your jacket? Maybe Santa Claus will bring you one. Oh, maybe so. You ready for some lunch? Yep. All right. Backwater's trickling across the main road into the back 40. It's here, two inches of it. Cotton's wet. The sun breaks. Maybe can get 100 pounds each. Jesse, going into town, check on the co-op. See if there's another farm or the Mexicans might get work. I 
have a secret for you. Can you keep a secret? Sure. Your daddy and I are thinking about going up north. What about me? Well, you're going to. What about Pappy and Graham? They're going to be OK. It's going to be exciting, Luke. Trust me. It'll be an adventure. could possibly bring you here? Ice cream. It's Sunday for the boys, isn't it? Y'all picking out there? No. Uh, creek came over last night. Moved more than half a mile before sunrise. The lower 40 is gone. Yeah, all the creeks are backing up. Just putting a lot of pressure on the St. Francis. You know someone who needs any Mexicans? We've got six of them now. Nothing to do. Ready to go home. Yeah, I think Riggs might know some farmers up north of Blyville, they might take them. Thanks, Jack. Mm -hmm. dream last night that Ricky came home. It was windy and he was standing out on the road in the wind and he made it just in time for Christmas. Mr. Latcher. Excuse me, ma'am. I need to speak to Mr. Chandler. Now he's in the barn. What is it? We've been flooded out. Water's up past the porch and in the house. Can you help us? We ain't got no place to go. Of course we can help. You folks can stay here. The loft is clean. The Mexicans just left. You'll have a warm bed and plenty of food. Let's get a move on. We'll get the loft ready. Let's go get dry. Come on, honey. Now, after you get dressed, you run down to the kitchen and get something to eat. They ain't much, but they're dry. Someone been in the family for generations. What's his name? I don't have one yet. When's Ricky coming home? I don't know. Say goodbye to the Mexicans? Yes, ma'am. Does that mean we're done picking cotton? Sure looks like it. Why does our land flood so quick? Because it's low and close to the river. It's just not very good land, Luke. That's one reason why we're leaving here. How long are we going to be up north? Not long. 
We'll stay until we save some money. When we come back, what are we gonna do? Well, we're not gonna farm. We'll get a job in Memphis, a Little Rock, and we'll buy us a house with a television and a telephone. And we'll have a nice car in the driveway, and you can play baseball on a team that has really uniforms. How's that sound to you? Sounds pretty good. We'll always come back and visit Pappy and Gran and Ricky, but be a new life, Luke. The crop loans can be rolled over to next spring. And the other bills can be put off, too. I hate the thought of riding those I owe, but... How do we get through the winter? Well, we got plenty of food, but... What about gasoline and electricity and oil for the truck? Yeah. About a third of the crop still out there standing in water. Weather breaks, we might be able to salvage a bit of it. Yeah, get us some money. Well, Jen will take most of that. Jimmy Dale is holding a job for me at the Buick plant. But he can't wait long. Jobs are tight right now, so we need to get on up there. He says I can make as much as $200 a week. We'll send home as much as we can. But we got to leave day after tomorrow. Eat your food, son. You'll be leaving tomorrow. Sir. She'll be coming back soon. Yes, sir. I've been thinking more about Hank, cowboy. Just leave it be like we agreed. Can't nothing good come from telling nobody. It's our secret. Deal? Deal. Don't forget about your pappy up there. You hear? I won't. I've written Ricky a letter to tell him all about the baby. Do you have his address? Yeah, I got it. Do you have an envelope? Sure. Could you mail my letter for me? Please, Luke, I don't think Ricky knows about the baby. I guess I can mail it. Thank you, Luke. You're talking like a Yankee. We're gonna be fine. I know. I'm just gonna miss you. 
you so much. <laughs> Good job, Luke. You've done a good job. Just wish we'd finished. Yeah. I figure another gallon? Yes, sir. That's about right. I'll get it done this winter. Thanks, Pappy. When you all come home, it'll be finished. Not like that. Let's shake on it. When we pulled away, Gran was standing by the front porch, wiping her face. My father told me not to cry, but I couldn't help it. My heart ached. But at the same time, I knew our adventure was just beginning. And I hoped when I returned one day, my Uncle Ricky would be coming home too. Just like in Grand's dreams, we would be a complete family again. <laughs>